Thank you for being here. So populated, and I'm really amazed. Um, um, tonight's talk will be about this. Uh, and what is this? Uh, this is about uh, creating ideas and retaining them somehow, OK? So we will talk about that. We will talk about how to ideate things and how to keep the best ones. Uh, the best ones that will be finally implemented uh, will be business, will be a sculptor, uh, a painting, whatever you may think of. Uh, but first of all, let's go. We created some mesmerizing pictures. So uh, the question is uh, keeping you awake uh, for, the last, for, the, for the next 40 minutes. A uh, short introduction about myself. Uh, as Ray told you, um, I'm an associate consultant at, at Inopol. We, we are a tiny uh, company in, in Spain, located in Toledo. Uh, and my background is embedded in critical systems. And in the last 10 years, I've been involved in many uh, RTD and innovation projects uh, for us, for the company, but also for other people, for other companies, individuals, and also for, uh, and also for, uh, uh, for entrepreneurs. Um, we are uh, my, and I currently coordinating uh, the project Stream Factories, and I will tell you a, a little bit about that project uh, later on. Uh, what else? Uh, our company, as I told you, is a, a very small uh, consultancy company located in Toledo, in Spain. Uh, we are uh, seven engineers of different disciplines uh, working together uh, in ideating projects for other companies and also for us. Uh, related with many subjects, uh, but mainly uh, in the area of uh, ICT. We are uh, mainly working uh, on these areas you see there, which are uh, service-oriented architectures, ontologies, knowledge management, and recently also uh, creativity, but creativity uh, focus on producing uh, things for industry. Okay, So creativity focus more on the industry side. Uh, and we work a lot with SMEs, with uh, entrepreneurs, but we also perform works for European Commission and for local administration. And this is a little bit about Stream Factories. This is the project that, that brought us here. A Stream Factories uh, is a web platform and a mobile solution uh, that will help people, not only industry or companies, but also individuals, uh, to set up challenges to the world, to launch challenges to the world, and uh, invite people to uh, post ideas, uh, to get these ideas evaluated and, and, uh, and finally selected and implemented. Okay? Uh, it's, it will work in a freemium model. So uh, um, when we go live in November this year, uh, you will be able to test the platform fully. Uh, and we will be fully free for some time. And then we will add like uh, uh, some services that you will need to pay for. But initially, uh, the initial functionality will be fully free. And these other people uh, here participating in this project, we, have four, uh, we are four RTD partners uh, performing uh, technological uh, work, which is Inopol, our company, ATV from Germany, C4FR from UK over there, also ATVs over there, <laughs> and Bifmo, a Finnish company. And then we have a set of uh, first users that all belong to industry. But uh, today we are going to present a case with a startup. It's, an, Spanish, it's an, inter an international startup. And it's, I think, a very interesting case that they started using uh, our system uh, for launching their, their solution, their product, really. You will see later on. So. Um, a little bit the basis of our project, uh, this is what I'm going to tell you right now. Um, some facts. Uh, currently, uh, because these numbers, let's say, that grow from, let's say, from decade to decade, but uh, in principle, uh, a human brain produces up to 70,000 uh, thoughts per day. Uh, so that means that almost every second we are like, Something's happening in our heads, OK? So maybe if you think in, in a car ride uh, when you're going uh, to work, uh, many things can be happening. Conscious and unconscious stuff on your brains. It's like 
you have to be aware of braking if something happens, if a red light comes. Or uh, maybe you can be thinking of your mortgage because uh, you don't have enough money in your bank account and you, make to, uh, you need to make a transfer, for example. Uh, you have to pick up your kids uh, at some time of the day. Uh, you're also happy because you're going to have pizza for dinner, uh, but you have no beers in the fridge. But maybe uh, you, have can, you can have kind of an illuminated moment and, and find the solution to the Poincaré conjecture, for example. Uh, and even you have to, you, you have to think about uh, your daily work, like finishing the monthly report. And all this is happening like in uh, 15 minutes while you drive uh, work from home. Uh, but what happens? These ideas can be lost on the way. Uh, maybe even you, you found the solution to the uh, point conjec uh, conjecture, but uh, suddenly it disappears with all this mess of ideas or, or thoughts in your head. But uh, we haven't talked yet about ideas. We, we have been talking about thoughts. Uh, we want uh, to retain ideas, not thoughts. We don't want really to make a blog or record every single thought in our brains. What we want to do is uh, to retain the most valuable ideas. Uh, I always like a lot to take a look at the dictionary. You know? And, and uh, just uh, taking a look at the dictionary, you find uh, that an idea is a really big stuff. Just if you consider the volume of the stuff, <laughs> if you see the definition of an idea, there are a lot of things happening there. And uh, there are even philosophical uh, questions around, uh, around ideas. Uh, but this is not what also we are talking about. We are talking about this. We are talking about valuable thoughts, uh, and we are talking specifically of uh, the product of our thinking, of our, uh, of, uh, of our brains, let's say, of the activity of our brains, but uh, trying to find uh, a specific uh, solution. We want to serve a purpose. Could be painting a picture, could be uh, rising up a, bis a new business, uh, could be uh, making a sculpture, uh, could be anything, OK? Uh, initially, the production of ideas is very much linked to, uh, to the gift of geniality. Uh, when you think about cre uh, creativity and imagination, you think about, first of all, maybe Einstein, or uh, George Perec, or maybe Nikola Tesla, or very big names in the world of science and arts. Uh, but this is not the point. Uh, the question is that any of us can be creative and imaginative if we uh, really set up the context for that to happen. We just need to train. Uh, train our brains to be creative and imaginative and then get, to, uh, get uh, um, valuable uh, ideas, valuable solutions. And we have plenty of tools for that. This, this is a very small sample of what you can find uh, on the internet. These are board games, dice games, uh, and all these, uh, all these tools uh, stimulate somehow your creativity and, uh, and your imagination. Uh, by, uh, you, you can have, for, for example, uh, Intuity, which are abstract images that m want to provoke things in your, in your brain. Uh, or you have like very complex board games like ThinkCube. Uh, or simple uh, creative thinking tools, uh, which are very common like brain writing, uh, brainstorming, etc. Uh, or even other games like Story Cubes, which are very popular in the UK. And all these all these uh, tools have something in common. Um, it helps people uh, to develop a personal uh, a skill, but uh, they do that uh, really in a very social way. I mean, this is social gaming. Uh, you involve other people, and these other people help you uh, being more creative uh, and more imaginative. So maybe you think, OK, I don't want to play this because I'm not really very creative or my imagination is crap. But uh, playing with other people around makes you be more creative and pushes you to, to go far, uh, uh, f far beyond your creativity and your imagination limits. 
Uh, another question about creativity and imagination is uh, that you have to, to create the appropriate context for that. Uh, if you are surrounded by uh, imaginative people, creative people, uh, for sure, on the end, you will be more imaginative and creative. And also, if you are in a, in a context which, is more, uh, which, is, which promotes somehow your creativity, you will also be more creative. And these are like, uh, let's say, a standard, a standard examples like Google Offices or IDO or Facebook Offices. But being realistic, uh, if you are an SME or if you are an individual uh, trying to start up a business, this is not really possible. Okay? Uh, but you can find really places that um, already uh, make that for you. Um, if you want to start up a business, you can go to, uh, to a hub, for example, or to a beta group that presented before Ramon Suarez in, in, in Belgium, for example. And, and these places are full of people trying to do things uh, 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 like you. Uh, and they are usually very nice places. So uh, when, uh, when you start conceiving an idea, they, uh, uh, every idea has uh, uh, a full process. It has a lifetime, uh, follows a specific workflow, let's say. And, uh, and it's really it's very important that uh, before you, you, uh, you reach the first step, the monkey, uh, before that even, uh, you have first must have struggled a lot your brain uh, before conceiving anything. Uh, even you, you, should, you must have studied a lot uh, around the problem for days, months, even years, uh, until you get to, to a specific solution. Uh, and then you reach the aha moment, okay? This is uh, an aha moment, but this is not the one we are talking about. This is the one we are talking about. Uh, these moments that may cut you in the sour, uh, climbing the Everest, uh, driving home uh, from work, okay? And this is the, the moments we are looking for. And these are the moments, uh, this is the, the guy having the idea in the sour. Uh, these are the moments we want to, to, to preserve, okay? These ideas are our precious, okay? Uh, and this is what, uh, and for that there are plenty of tools in the market, and we will see some right now for different purposes, and how Stream Factories uh, also tries to, uh, to provide a solution for that. Um, but when it, 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 it's, it, it comes a time to, to uh, let's say, open uh, your ideas to the world, um, you, you may have, it, it might be difficult for an individual to do that in, in an organization. Because you may think that somebody is going to, uh, to uh, steal your idea. Uh, maybe you think that, uh, okay, if I say that, maybe uh, that guy over there is going to laugh at me. There are plenty of uh, constraints for uh, somebody to offer ideas to the organization or even uh, to the world in an open environment, okay? So uh, we also want to, to make this, this platform uh, uh, to avoid that, okay? And for that, uh, we made a, a really hard bet on what we call collective ownership. This is not a term uh, of our own. Uh, collective ownership is uh, a term uh, that, that was uh, firstly uh, described by extreme programming, by Ken Beck. And it says this way, collective ownership encourages everyone to contribute new ideas to all segments of the project. Any developer can change any line of code to add functionality, fix bugs, improve designs, or refactor. No one person becomes a bottleneck for changes. And this is the concept we want to transfer, to shift uh, to the world of innovation, OK? Uh, where you say code, you can say anything, OK? You, you can say a canvas, you can say uh, a shoe, you can say whatever you may think of, OK? Because it's really demonstrated that collective ownership uh, allows the group to be more identified with the, with the group and with, and with the organization, not to the limit of tattooing the, the, <laughs> the name of, uh, of, the, of the company, uh, but it provokes really uh, people to be highly identified. And when we talk about collective ownership, we talk about collective ideation, which means all together, 
uh, thinking on a specific goal, for example, to, pro to, to provide ideas. All together, working in the evaluation of other people's ideas. And all together, working in the implementation of these ideas. So, uh, for that, uh, as I told you before, there are plenty of tools. Maybe the, the, the best known tool uh, in, the, uh, in the scope of open innovation is, uh, is IDEO, which is very, very well known, and also, and also Innocentive. Um, we also have corporate open innovation tools, which are tools that are made specifically for, uh, for big corporations, and uh, they, they, are, they have a specific goals, like improving uh, the machine tools in the company, like Bosk, for example, or improving the attention to the public, like Starbucks, with my Starbucks idea. Uh, and then we have a plethora of uh, idea management tools in the market. Uh, maybe the, 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 the most known is idea scale or right idea, but you can find plenty of them. And the purpose of these tools are uh, managing your ideas, basically. They're also uh, like another track, which is uh, really mm, customer care tools that are somehow uh, customized as open, and as, as inno as open innovation uh, tools. And uh, what they all have in common is that they are extremely expensive uh, tools. Uh, they are mm, almost tailor-made for, for big corporations, uh, leaving aside uh, individuals and, uh, and also small companies. Of course, you can participate in an open innovation process, for sure. But uh, it's very difficult for an individual or for an SME uh, to promote or uh, to propose their own, uh, their own challenges, okay? There, there have been uh, a couple of tries in the, in the open source market, like uh, the, the solution that uh, was developed by Best Buy, which is this BBI, BBY IDX and WR IDEA, mm, but they have not been very successful, successful must say. And when you come to finish all the process, we, we have seen that these, these tools allow you like, to you have plenty of tools like for uh, stimulating somehow your creative thinking. Uh, you have also tools to retain this, these ideas, but then you have to implement them somehow. And then you transfer all this knowledge to your, let's say, uh, your favorite uh, project management tool. Okay, so you have to implement it. So you are already tracking. You are already losing the track of all this process, uh, and that's why uh, that's why we propose stream factories because we are proposing uh, a platform that allows uh, you to post ideas, to have them evaluated, and also to implement them. Uh, so we can really learn from the past, uh, from past errors. And also, we can also uh, take advantage of, of, uh, of previous success, OK? So this is all what uh, Stream Factories does. OK, all. Mm, it's 15 functionalities that uh, trying to summarize uh, a little bit what, what Stream Factories does. Uh, it's a repository for innovation projects that you have to fit somehow. Um, it also provides private areas for companies and individuals. Uh, it allows people to create their own networks, uh, similar to LinkedIn, for example. You can create your own network. Uh, you can self-evaluate yourself and your company uh, to see if your context is appropriate. We have talked a lot about the context, about do, you have, do we have the appropriate people? Do we have the appropriate resources for uh, performing innovative projects. You can ev evaluate yourself. Uh, you can also create uh, campaigns for innovation. Uh, but um, which is really powerful of the platform is that you can open them or restrict them, which means that you can create open innovation uh, campaigns, open to the world, 
or you can restrict them to your people, uh, to your, uh, let's say, partnering companies. Uh, and then, as a participant, you can post ideas, you can vote for them. Uh, and also, the platform uh, provides support if you go blank. I mean, when, whenever you are posting ideas, uh, you, can, you, you have available like plenty of resources uh, of uh, creativity boosting techniques uh, that may help you uh, to be more creative and imaginative, OK? Um, and then people can start iterating as many times as they want until they get to the, to the candidate idea. Uh, and then finally, uh, the one who decides uh, that idea to be a project can make the full follow-up. Even if it's a new product, uh, you can even make the follow-up in the market. Okay? So here we have the full life cycle. Since you conceive an idea until you put, for example, uh, the product in the market, if it's a product or a new service, or even if you want to improve your manufacturing process, uh, you can also do that in the platform. So uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in our consortium, we are 11 companies, and seven of them are in users. But all of them are consolidated uh, companies, I mean, consolidated SMEs. Uh, they have been uh, running for at least some 10 years, 15, 20, so. Uh, but we wanted to uh, test that in a, in a startup environment. So we came across, uh, very recently in fact, with this uh, startup, which is called Vic. Uh, they started like very early this year, like in March, or something like this. And Big uh, is that. It's Big Wallet is a slim wallet. And these people uh, have been using the platform uh, not from the very beginning. Uh, but the, the case is very curious because uh, these guys, which are, are located uh, in, Bar in Barcelona, Mexico, and, and Florida, uh, they didn't really want what they wanted to do. They just knew that they wanted to start up something and that they wanted to create things, stuff like this. They wanted to do things, not didn't want to make software anymore. They are software, a couple of software engineers and, and one designer, and they wanted to create things. Uh, and first, they started up a brainstorming, thinking of what to do. Okay, uh, so they are following uh, the Eric Rice Lean startup, and, and this uh, this uh, this approach uh, tells you that you can start up things. Uh, from experimentation, maybe you, you don't have um, very clear what you wha uh, uh, what you want to sell, what you want to do, but uh, you can really uh, create like uh, iterative experiments until you get with the final idea. And this is what these guys have done. Uh, they started with a um, hypothesis, uh, then they have gone through several uh, iterative product releases, and everything is done by validated learning. What does this mean? This means that uh, every step uh, they, uh, they go beyond, uh, every step they make, uh, is validated by someone, by a supplier, by a, a set of customers. Uh, so it's very important, if uh, you want to follow this approach, uh, to involve, uh, this, is, this is a little bit the iterative process. Uh, they started with a specific uh, sketch, and then they went through different prototypes until they, they uh, obtain uh, the final product, which is the one, the blue one you see, you see below. Okay? And for, for, for managing this, they have involved, uh, they have involved the suppliers of the, of the elastic band. This is a wallet with elastic band, and this is a way of holding your cards inside the, inside the wallet. Okay? Uh, they have involved the suppliers in this process. Uh, but also, they have involved the customers. They are constantly uh, inquiring people about uh, the boxing of the product, the colors. And this is how they have used uh, Stream Factories. This is a screenshot of our, of our product. So let's say that uh, in a first iteration, they are thinking of what are they going to do. So, so uh, when thinking of that, they only involve uh, the, the team itself. So, uh, this is what we call, uh, let's say, the, the circus of, of influence of uh, stream factories. 
and they keep that, that uh, question just for the staff. Okay? Uh, okay, if you're a big company, you can specify a specific uh, departments or even a specific people to participate. In this case, just three people, so <laughs> it's not a big issue. Uh, it's open for all the company members. Mm, uh, the next step was uh, they saw that the elastic band, uh, the first prototype, they used two uh, narrow uh, elastic bands, and this was not working. They, they made a uh, personal test of that, and it didn't work. It didn't work very well because this, the cards slipped off the uh, of the wallet. So uh, they really needed to solve that. So uh, they wanted to, to add a new elastic band for prototype two, and they launched that. And for that, they also involved the, the suppliers. Okay, they involved different suppliers uh, in this process, and there uh, they launched specific questions. And, and then, uh, finally, they got, uh, let's say, uh, they obtained uh, two things. Um, uh, several, of, several ideas from, from, the, from the suppliers uh, and the supplier itself, the one that gave the, the best solution. Uh, this is a, uh, the way that uh, we present the ideas uh, and how, they can, how can they be voted. We, we'll see it later on. Uh, and then, uh, they launched a, a third campaign, which was uh, more uh, devoted uh, to see uh, what kind of wallets th they, they are going to, uh, to produce on the end. And, and then they, they launched this campaign, which is, which colors do you prefer? Uh, and this is open. This is open because they want uh, to create, uh, they want to fail here because uh, producing the wallet is really expensive. So uh, they launched this, uh, this questionnaire to, to uh, plenty of people uh, to gather the best choices for producing the colors. Uh, so on the end, what, what do they have? Uh, they have a, a ranked list uh, of, of ideas and they, they, uh, just, uh, they just select the, the winning one and then they can implement it uh, in the implementation states of uh, stream factories. So as you can see, stream factories has allowed these people to, Im to implement their, their lean iterative approach and also to involve external actors. Okay? For us, it's very, very important uh, to involve external actors from the very beginning. Um, oops, this is the final product they, they have made. Maybe the black core is not the best choice to present. Uh, and, and why for us is very important to involve external actors. Uh, I, I can give you uh, a set of examples, and I will finish my presentation, of, uh, of humongous failures uh, in the industry of video games that initially they look like, mm, look like very, really uh, gorgeous, but on the end they were humongous commercial failures. The first example is the power glove. Uh, this is this was made for. <laughs> this was made uh, by Mattel, and it was uh, uh, intended to be used in, in Nintendo. Uh, and it was a, a big fake, really, because you could not really uh, handle very well. You could not move and jump on at the same time, or if you uh, used your fingers to, to move the character, uh, it was almost impossible to move. This is another very nice example which is the Virtual Boy, also uh, an, another nice uh, invention by Nintendo. And, and this is the stuff that the, the guy had to carry in his head. Uh, it produced a, a lot of uh, neck cake, you know? And, uh, and that's what you saw in the, in the screen. So after uh, 15 minutes of playing this stuff, you went crazy directly. Uh, and the third example is the activator. The activator also uh, was, uh, was an invention by Sega, and um, it's really uh, uh, it's this hexagon, and it produces some aces, and, and then you just interrupt them, uh, and each one of the uh, of the sides is one button. Okay, it's uh, up, down, and then uh, you could not really like produce complex movements that, like like pressing two buttons and because you could just activate one thing, or jumping maybe you could uh, activate a couple of movements, okay? Uh, so what do they have in common? 
As I told you, the three of, of these examples were humongous uh, commercial failures. And why? Because uh, nobody asked the gamers if, this was, uh, if that was really necessary by that time. Okay? Uh, after uh, playing Virtual Boy, if somebody would have asked somebody, would say, okay, after 15 minutes, I need to puke because it's really, or I cannot make uh, a complex mov movement uh, with the activator. Okay, so, uh, so that's why uh, we need to involve external actors. We, uh, we, we uh, need to ask uh, our suppliers, our customers, if that's what they really want. But they had a second chance, and more or less, this is what, <laughs> what the activator is right now, okay? Uh, uh, and also Nintendo made a try with, uh, with an, let's say, an evolved uh, power glove with the Wiimote, for example, okay? So uh, this is a little bit uh, what I wanted to talk to you about. And um, I also wanted to let you know that we are going to go live in, in November this year, and we are really asking for, we also want to involve uh, our customers from the very beginning. Uh, and despite we have uh, a specific end users in our project, we also want everybody to, to join us. And so you can take this QR if you want, <laughs> and you will be connected directly to our platform, OK? And that's all. Thank you very much for attending the meeting at this time. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Anything you want to ask? Nothing? Thank you.